So let's talk trash, shall we? <laughs> not that the, not that we want to, because it's not the most fun topic or the most sexiest topic, you know, talking about waste. But this is something that we should be talking about because, uh, unfortunately, this is becoming uh, a problem. But uh, we used, we uh, think that there is this black hole, you know, in a form of a trash can below our desks and it just sucks our waste in and uh, and we are using the term in many languages that we are throwing stuff out but uh, the the truth of the matter is that there is no out there is in so we are throwing it into our environment into our water supply our food supply our uh, air that we breathe etc and uh, also, the, the thing is that this is a new problem because it didn't exist so much 50 years ago. So we need to catch up. And uh, even in Latvia, we, uh, some of us know that, you know, plastic bag used to be a sign of modernity. It used to be something cool. Now we all know that it is something uh, that is devastating the environment, but we can't really learn how to uh, live without it. And here is some trivia about... Uh, the problem of the of the waste. I know it's a bad style to put a lot of information into presentation, but I'm just gonna <laughs> go through it uh, quickly. It's just to show you the scope of it and uh, how uh, connected with different areas of the of our life uh, that is. So uh, each year in European Union, uh, average person discards uh, 500 kilograms of waste. So multiply that and we get millions of tons of waste that we are again not throwing out there is no out it's just it, sh it stays there we are just moving it so we need to deal with that a uh, big part of of the waste is food waste which is also a, a separate problem that is a very important as well because not only we are wasting the resources that it takes to uh, uh, grow the food the money that we are spending to buy it and the calories that so many people uh, lack in this world. So it's a layered problem as well. Uh, ocean garbage patches, do you know what that is? There are uh, places in the ocean where streams are taking the waste that is uh, drifting in the ocean and creating these garbage patches that are like islands and the biggest uh, right now in the pacific ocean is the size of guys france the size of france and i've seen this uh, these videos in uh, in youtube where they're filming it from helicopters it looks like uh, like uh, wall e do you know the cartoon just just waste everywhere and it's supposed to be you know ocean but uh, this this is a real thing and um, Yes, uh, so the contamination, we are already dealing with microplastics in uh, our water supply and we are consuming it in the fish that we eat. Uh, so we are already starting to eat our trash. This is uh, something that the consequences of that we will see in the future, because right now we don't really know uh, what, it is, what is it doing to us. But... Um, Yes, that's, that's our bright future. And uh, the biodiversity thing is also something that's very concerning. Uh, maybe you know that recently this report came out, uh, the uh, environmental scientists uh, said that the, the speed of the loss of biodiversity is much faster than they thought. So this is a, also a very pressing problem. And, and these uh, pretty pictures are just a small part of, uh, of of the scale of the problem and pollution is one of the biggest uh, causes for loss of biodiversity. It's not the only one, but it, it plays a very big part. And the uh, last thing that's, uh, that I like to use uh, to call uh, as a logical problem. So what we are doing, we are using resources, uh, we are spending a lot of energy to, for example, pump oil out of the ground. Then we are using a lot of resources to produce, for example, like a small plastic cup. And then we just take it into the tasting in the supermarket. We take one sip of the new thing that they ha are invented there. And, and this uh, thing, it stays. And best case scenario, we are recycling it again, spending a lot of resources. So we are uh, being very rational the way we go about it. 
So, what to do? Uh, well, what we are told to and what we should absolutely do is uh, recycle. And uh, this is a, should be the only way that we discard our waste. Uh, see it as resources and put it back into cycle that it's used again. The problem with recycling, there are two uh, main problems. One is the micromanagement one, uh, is that we have different service providers for the recycling. So example, in Riga, we have several. So neighbors can have different rules, what they can recycle, how they're supposed to recycle. And it's very important to do that properly because by do, uh, doing that uh, not uh, the right way, we can contaminate the, the stuff that other people have uh, separated there. So it's important to uh, really learn about what your service provider uh, takes and how to recycle that, how to separate it, because there are some who take just only plastic. There are some where you can throw cans, like food cans, into the same bin as plastic. Some take, I think, the milk cartons uh, clean, of course. You should always throw out clean stuff. You know that, right? No greasy pizza boxes in the, in the paper uh, can and so on. And, uh, and the other problem of recycling. So guys, yeah, let's recycle. That's important. <laughs> the other problem with recycling is that it's not enough. It's, it's not going to solve the, um, the problem of the amount. Because first of all, not everything is recyclable. And uh, plastic has very few recycling cycles. Glass is supposedly recyclable endlessly, but not everyone does it like that. Unfortunately, in Latvia, we are making uh, building materials out of glass. So that's like one, one recycling cycle. We are putting them into building blocks and asphalt and, 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 and so on. So, and uh, the sheer scale of the waste is a problem because uh, we are creating much more than we are able to recycle. So maybe you know about the China problem now that China is refusing to accept uh, Western waste that it did up to this point. And since last year, they are ref refusing that. And so many Western countries are left with their uh, stuff that they, you know, joyfully shipped to China for them to deal with. And uh, it depends on, on country to country, how are they dealing with the problem? But in many countries, it's, uh, it's just sitting there because uh, they can't catch up to the amount of of the recyclables. So, um, and uh, here the zero waste approach comes in handy because uh, here, as you can see, the, the principles, recycle is one of the last principles. It's, it's, it goes before the landfill. And, uh, or in some schemes it goes before rotting, but that doesn't really matter. So this is the approach that we, can use, uh, we all have very different lives. We all have very different needs. Uh, mom of three who lives in countryside, she is managing her waste differently. Student who is living in the city is managing uh, their waste dif differently. So we all should uh, uh, find our own approach. But these are great rules uh, that we can follow to, to do that. And uh, I will go into depth a little bit about each one of them. So refusing is a big one. And, uh, and uh, I'm not saying that uh, we should all, you know, become monks and uh, live in a forest and not uh, live a modern life. But there are so many things that we are, that are thrown at us everywhere on each step that we can simply refuse, like corporate gifts, like party favors, like, like balloons for kids uh, at a just supermarket, some kind of festival and so on. You know, these, these things are endless. Uh, and uh, we are maybe sometimes sh shy to refuse or we don't wanna go into explaining why we are uh, refusing. But uh, this is, uh, we should get rid of the illusion that that's free. You know, it's maybe free for us, but it comes at a big price. So refusing is a big one. And uh, it's, it takes exercising. 
it's the same as with the with the thing you know you offered me the plastic uh, thing uh, you just have to constantly uh, pay attention to that but with time it takes a little bit of like a a vision that uh, you can see these things that uh, that you don't need <clears throat> and uh, the second one is uh, connected to the first one it's reducing so uh, Again, I'm not saying that we should all be wearing one pair of shoes uh, all year and, uh, and uh, you know, all become minimalists, but it's very uh, healthy to uh, ask yourself the question, uh, when I'm purchasing something, when I'm bringing uh, uh, something into my life, uh, a material thing, uh, what is driving that? Is that necessity? Because so often it isn't. So often it's successful marketing campaign. You know, we all want to think that we are above that, but we're not. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, because we fr our friends are, have that or are using that because uh, our parents uh, use that, and and so many so many just uh, uh, stuff comes in in before necessity. And again, asking yourself what the necessity means to me. And I'm not saying that you know every everything should be only. Uh, uh, that it shouldn't have like an emotional value to it because an emotion we are emotional towards our things as well and that's that's important but it's you know it's again it's an exercise and and when you go home and you look at our stuff and your your stuff and it's it's a uh, healthy to look at it and and just think do i really need that and actually i i went a bit crazy with this because <laughs> I gave away like 70% of my stuff that I had a couple of years ago. I just realized that I'm not using this. Somebody may need this. And it's, uh, it's great that I didn't have to throw it out. We have these beautiful Facebook groups and people just take everything. They take broken lamps, they take everything. So they sell it afterwards also. That's well, I don't care. I don't care about that. But uh, I cleaned out my space from unnecessary stuff. Uh, and third uh, step is reusing. So here comes into play all of this stuff, which I see you are doing, and it's great. And there are so many things that we can reuse. We can shop in bulk with our own bags, with our own jars. I will tell uh, about that a little bit, a little bit later. And uh, uh, buying secondhand, you know, we, especially in Latvia, we have this trauma of the 90s that we think secondhand clothes are... Uh, a sign of poverty but right now the second hand market is so big because we live in a time of overproduction and we use something a couple times and we give it away yesterday i bought my son uh, sandals uh, brand new leather sandals for two euros guys it's half of the price of my uh, almond latte so mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's they are leather so a cow has been raised to, to produce these sandals but they the pr this product doesn't have much value nowadays because we are disconnected from the amount of resources that something takes for it to be produced and also so many different things like i use my dad's old phones and he's buying new ones and this one the what do you call the thing? Not the microphone. I don't hear what somebody is saying, so I have to talk with the, the earphones. And everyone in my family is like, come on, just buy a normal mm -hmm. phone. We can't stand you with these earphones because I always lose them and then I can't pick up my phone. Anyway, <laughs> so and here the only, only fourth step is, is recycling. So when you have uh, refused, reduced and reused, then what you have left with, you should be separating it into recycling options. And uh, rotting, well, this is a tricky one in the city, but it's again another logical mistake. So what we are doing right now, we are taking organic waste that can uh, uh, decompose within a year, and we are burying it in a landfill where it sits there. And it doesn't have... Uh, um, Oxygen that it takes to decompose, it decomposes slowly, it uh, 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 throws out methane, that is uh, one of the greenhouse gases. And uh, if we think about how much of our waste is organic waste, you know, our banana peels and potato peels and whatnot, then uh, it's in my household, it was 50%. So when I started composting, it, uh, it reduced the amount of my waste for 
50%. And in the book, The Zero Waste Home, uh, the author writes about some kind of research that was done where they were digging up uh, samples from the landfill. And it really is like that, that after 30 years, there are still sandwiches there. They don't decompose because they're layered with other trash and they are buried there so they, they are incapable of... Uh, of decomposing and I do it because I live in a smaller town I, I do live in a, an apartment and uh, I just collect my uh, organic waste and then I take it to my parents who live in the same town and they have the the composting thing but maybe you know if someone is a fan of worms there are those options in the, in the apartment as well and actually uh, what I am very hopeful about is that European Union uh, demands actually uh, for uh, municipalities to have their own facilities so we should be able to uh, separate uh, this waste as well <laughs> so this is a little bit uh, inside how it looks uh, in my household so uh, kitchen is probably the the place where the most trash is accumulated so first thing you sh should probably tackle the kitchen and the great way to do it is starting buying bulk foods and when I started doing that it was quite tricky I went to market I, I, I did what I could in Rimi but now in Riga we have three zero waste shops it's it's amazing you know Berlin has one we are like <laughs> the capital of zero waste and uh, also different uh, uh, household stuff that's very useful it can also be bought in these shops and everything you can imagine uh, can be b uh, bought in bulk there. So taking my own uh, uh, bags, taking my own jars. I don't use animal products anymore. So that third picture is not uh, relevant anymore. But I did do that. I did go to the dairy shop with my own jars. And I even talked to the ladies. So they would cut up cheese. They would usually cut up cheese and then wrap it in plastic. And then I would take my jar to them and, and tell, tell them that when they are cutting up cheese, they can fill up my jar and I will pick it up the next day. And uh, yeah, actually a lot of the, lot of the stuff uh, can be bought in Rimi as well. Uh, but I do buy stuff in uh, glass and in uh, cardboard and then I just recycle them. I try to avoid plastic as much as I can. Um, but not, you know, not to the extent where I'm going crazy. This is something that I, <laughs> that I learned along the way, that I can't change everything at once. There are exceptions. There are times when I'm just tired or, or something. And uh, I'm trying to be, you know, a little bit sane about that. Uh, cleaning products. So uh, no need for those. Baking soda, vinegar, uh, citric acid. You, clean, you can clean everything with them. You don't need any toxic... Uh, the stuff for each application, you know, different stuff for this, different stuff for that. And uh, yeah, reusable items I mentioned, like for example, uh, straws. I don't feel the need for straws myself, but my son uh, likes to have a straw in his smoothie, so, so we are using these ones. And um, yes, the recycling and composting is, you can see the the little part of, of my kitchen counter there, so I separate paper, glass, a little bit of plastic. Uh, I'm composting the, the food jars, the metal jars. And I take out my, my compost like, once a week, my recyclables like once a month, and my landfill waste a couple times a year. So that's not a literal zero, but that's something, you know, it's much, much less than 500 kilograms per year. And it's uh, achievable. It took me some, you know, uh, some time to uh, get used to that but for example uh, the fabric uh, bags that I took for uh, to the mar to the market or to the shop I get, got used to them like in two weeks at first I was a little bit embarrassed and the ladies were the the cashiers were like looking at me weirdly but in two weeks I, I had already forgotten how to shop differently um, so I guess the next uh, place in homes that are very trash producing are bathrooms. And uh, also many 
many alternatives. So before I started this, I didn't know that in my town uh, I can buy and package toilet paper in three places. I've never like paid attention to that. But now I think, why do I? Why should I buy a package to toilet paper if I can avoid that? And it's not uh, difficult. Also, bamboo toothbrushes are very available right now everywhere. Silk floss in a little glass thingy, so you don't have to buy nail-on ones or or uh, plastic toothbrushes. <clears throat> Toothpaste is a little bit more tricky. I'm not a big on DIY, so I'm not into making my own toothpaste. Uh, my, some of my friends are doing that, but I don't live close to those shops and then you have to like buy five grams of this and, and it's, it's not for me. You can buy some uh, uh, plas uh, packaged in, in glass, some uh, toothpaste. I do sometimes buy in, uh, in plastic though, because yes, maybe toothpaste is the most difficult one from, from the bathroom. Uh, so shampoo bars, if you haven't heard of them yet, it's, it's the same as soap. It's just, uh, you know, you don't need water in your shampoo. It just uh, creates an, an additional uh, plastic bottle. Menstrual cup is the greatest invention of the 21st century, I think. Uh, stainless steel razors as well, natural deodorants, all of this stuff is available and even more, you know, things you don't even think you need. This is a little bit of another trap. I sometimes see people getting into that they are so, you know, they don't want to get rid of this consumer uh, uh, mindset. They don't want to refuse and reduce. And so what they are doing, they are buying a lot of stuff from these, from these shops and this, this natural stuff. Yes, and, and closet is something that, that also contributes to the Landfills, probably you've heard the, about the fast fashion uh, problem nowadays. It's, it's been talked about. I think actually in the last couple of years, I've seen the problem of waste and the problem of climate change and problem of, uh, of just the overall uh, uh, human impact on environment. It kind of has penetrated the mainstream media because it used to be just a green crazy green people bubble, information bubble, and now I see it everywhere. So the, the fast fashion thing is as, as well. So some of the, the tips are, you know, you know what are the most environmentally friendly clothes? The ones that you already own. <laughs> so try to wear them. And if you don't want to wear them, try to swap them. I'm like wearing every everything my friends give me. It's uh, I'm happy about that. It's very uh, financially uh, sane decision. <laughs> uh, yeah, make your own fashion decisions because this is also something that we have given away. We are like looking at other people to do it for us. And what other people are telling us that we have to change our wardrobes twice a year. So uh, making these decisions and investing in more in those items that are wearable, you know, not in those that will go out of fashion in, a, in a six months. Buying second hand again, uh, swapping, and you know, as a last resort to uh, buying sustainable fashion. It's always uh, quite more expensive. But again, if we wanna uh, uh, support some business that are doing it right, you know, if we can afford it, we should do it. And uh, these are just some of the some of the tips that uh, they usually give you in in those zero waste blogs so i'm doing it for you <laughs> uh, before you google it uh, the the coffee cup is uh, something that should be i hope it will go away soon mm, and the, the bottles I, I i see that people use them a lot nowadays the bags the styrofoam you know it's so uh, weird that there are countries that have banned styrofoam because it's toxic, because it's non-recyclable, and then here we are just eating out of them. So that's something that should go. Um, and clothes again, and uh, for those of you, I don't know if many of you could have kids. Anyway, <laughs> the, <laughs> the washable diapers are the way to go because diapers are like 2% of the 
the landfill, uh, overall landfill amount. So th that are just diapers. So yes, if you are interested in this, um, uh, learn from me. Uh, uh, start gradually. Don't go. Don't try to go zero waste uh, overnight. Because if you uh, if you are implementing something gradually, then you can. There's a bigger chance that you will stick with it. And uh, also, you need to kind of find the way for yourself because some some of the things that I started with don't really work for me that well and and now I've implemented something else and uh, yes the first step should be uh, looking at the waste that you're creating not not to just giving it to the black hole because uh, sometimes we don't even think about what is the the stuff that we produce the most. How many times are we buying those coffees? Or how many, how many little cans of Coca-Cola are we drinking every day or whatever? So this is the first step. And then kind of when you start to think about that, you can't and see that. So there, there goes the, the looking for solutions. And yeah, find what works for you because uh, this is... Uh, this is not, you know, one fits all. This is not something that we should uh, all be doing the same way. It's something that uh, that uh, can be done different ways, and we all have, you know, this um, our own willingness to uh, set back, you know, to change. And not not everyone has to do it the same. But the thing is that. World doesn't need like hundred people who are doing zero waste perfectly. It needs everyone to do it at a certain amount so that we can tackle this problem. So, this is it for me. I talk very fast. Yeah, I do welcome questions if you have any. I can just add maybe from my side, uh, like what worked also for me a lot, like when you start watching your waste, as, as, as you say, and exactly like you, when you start to think about recycling, like for example, and very, very deeply, not just, you know, plastic, paper, and so on, but you, because it's not just plastic and paper, many things that we have, but if you dig in the topic of uh, like recycling, then you start to understand that actually, what you thought is plastic is not actually plastic, so it's not like actually plastic, recyclable, yeah. or it's just uh, put it in many different materials which you cannot actually recycle and put in one container. And then you just, you know, this thought, like, you know, falls on you, like, why are we doing it? I mean, like, we don't actually need it. Like, if I buy it a second time, I don't have a place to recycle it, so it will just stay. Yeah. And then it just switch, switch you off all, all the possible, like, plastics and some different materials which you just don't buy and you understand wow i mean like it's so simple we don't need them we're just too much used to them yeah like for example bottles are made from pet and it's widely recyclable and uh, and many of the food packages that are also clear plastic is pp polypropylene and it's uh, it's not as recyclable like it there is a small percentage that's recycled from this type of material. And yeah, by the way, a fun fact for you, 9% of all the produced uh, plastics are recycled. Not just 9%. So first of all, people are not doing it. Second of all, not everything is recyclable. And, and there are stuff that has already been recycled and it's not recyclable anymore. But, you know, anyway, we should be, you know, buying and supporting the recycled materials anyway, because this is the circular approach to, to resources. You were saying about this compost, that, yeah, it's like it produces this metal and all the stuff, but there is, like, no other option to... No, right now in the city there isn't. Okay, you... and if it, in not, not in the city, if you have, like, your kind of uh, village or like, whatever, what are... Are there like more sane options to... If you have your own land, you can just buy a compost bin. And there it's under the water, under the rain, under the sunlight. Uh, so it's it wouldn't oxygen. be that it's not under, yes, under yes, the ground? Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. If it's, if it's uh, compost in a natural way, it just mm. turns into, into dirt in a mm. in couple of years. Mm -hmm. But is it not separated when, when they... Um, like? sort the, the waste 
I, I've seen videos where like compost is somehow separated because it's heavier than the other materials. And... I don't know uh, anyone in Latvia who separates landfill waste, by the way. This is something that people are thinking that if they throw something into the Sadziv Sadkritomi, that it gets separated. No, it just goes to landfill. I saw a video from Latvia. I, I forgot. Uh, yeah, I actually, I'm interested if, if you can remember wh what it was. Mm -hmm. Maybe from Wentzels, or I know that there is a city in Latvia that uses this methane and that's it gets from the trash. No, Gatlin does it too. They, they are pumping yeah. it out. They have the system. Yes, they are using it. Yeah. I noticed an image of a takeout box usually. And uh, recently I discovered that if you order from Bolt, this like food delivery, uh, they offer this option that you can choose um, environment friendly packages and they are made of Sugar cane, yeah. in, in Estonia. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's great that people are starting to think about it and having these options. A lot of the times you have to be a bit careful if that's not greenwashing, because there are many things that are told to, you know, like trash bags who are, you know, there is written they are bio trash bags and they are decomposing faster. What they are doing, they are just turning into microplastics faster. That's not organic material. So if these options are available, it's great, but then you kind of have to watch if, if that's not just the case of greenwashing. But I'm sure with Vault it isn't. And what do you know about services in Riga? For example, I'm trying to recycle plastic layer, I don't know, paper bag. And uh, after that, I see that uh, all this garbage was taken with one car. Yes, yes, that's a, that's the thing. It's not a. It's it doesn't mean that they are you know throwing it out. Uh, it just for them logistically, it's easier to send one car and then they uh, put it in in one car and then they say every everyone separate re separates the stuff you have separated. They don't just you know throw it into the machine that recycles. They are re-separating it. It's important that you put clean plastic there, clean paper, and they are just dividing it. But for the companies, it's easier to send one car. So there's no point? There's no, no, there is, there is point. Or you can put it in one bag probably, but you should like clean the plastic, uh, you should uh, not put there some stuff. It's just, it's just, you know, it makes uh, more sense, it's easier for the people to understand that you put plastic in one bin and paper in another bin. I've heard that it's also for education of our people just to keep them uh, separating. Yeah. And afterwards maybe they will invite something that they have one part taking it just I think I think as as much as I've heard uh, these companies talking about it it's always just the issue of it's cheaper for them you know gas wise to send one car because they're reseparating it anywhere uh, any way maybe you can show your favorite places in Riga for uh, like Zero waste shopping. That, that these two shops, okay, probably everybody knows. Well, Central Market. Central Market. But uh, with Central Market, it used to be somewhere I, I would go, but now where when we have these zero waste shops, I go there because it's so many options there. And in Central Market, sometimes you don't know how long these lentils have been sitting there. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, but these zero waste shops have everything you you might possibly need. They have even like ice cream. You can buy ice cream in your jars. Or I don't I don't look at ice creams. But, <laughs> but yeah. Any more questions? Okay, then thank you so much. Thank you for uh, coming. We appreciate you coming. <laughs>